thanks. Hey, uh, what, what I want to do today is that we have heard a lot about SDN applications. Uh, we heard that it can do a lot of things. What I want to share with you is that we have created some real SDN applications that connect the infrastructure world to the enterprise applications world. The enterprise applications like CRM from Salesforce or SAP or from OSS BSS systems running in service providers, how do they connect to the infrastructure through this uh, SDN? That's what we're going to talk about. We have created a couple of apps. I'm going to share a little bit of details on those apps. These apps are available on Cisco from Cisco for you to buy and productize it. I have a small agenda. So I have a couple of reference architectures that I want to talk about. Because this is DevNet zone, I want to be a little more technical and show you what the reference architecture looks like, what problems are we going to solve here, and how do we do it. So I want to start with the current enterprise. That I don't want to spend too much time on this slide, but I want to lay the lay of the land. If you look at the enterprise, they want to reduce cost, but provide more services. Everything is becoming as a service, including your own IT is a service shop. So in this world, how does SDN come and play? So we don't want to be looking at market architecture slides. We want to look at real architecture. How does it play and how does it work? So what we want to do is connect all of these pieces. We're looking at this as an integration problem rather than as a network problem solving with SDN controllers. We're looking at this as an integration problem. How do you bring people, process, data, applications, infrastructure, all of them together, and then make them understand each other and talk to each other? That's the what we're trying to talk about. So if you look at the way Cisco is looking at solving this problem, if you want to make applications talk to infrastructure in a bi-directional way, you're going to solve it through a platform. And we're going to bring to market a platform that will do this for you. All the heavy lifting, all the uh, connections will be pre-integrated from the platform. So I want to make sure that when we talk about integration, the key challenge we see is that three categories of integration exist. One is the first one is the app to app, which has been in, there in the market for 10 to 15 years, like connecting from one application to another application. For example, if you want to connect from a CRM application to a billing application, you can actually get connectors. You have a lot of applications available like Tipco or MuleSoft. These kind of integration platforms are already available. People are familiar with that. When it comes to infrastructure to infrastructure, uh, Cisco and other companies have been in the business for a long time. They've been connecting router to switch, switch to other equipment. What we have not seen is something connecting the applications to infrastructure. This is the focus of our discussion on uh, the applications we're building. Mind you, this we're looking at in a bi-directional way, not in a one direction. Not that application, so let's say an application is consuming resources and comes to you and say, I want to increase the bandwidth because I'm trying to push more data. That's one directional discussion. So what we're looking at it is bi-directional. Let's say an infrastructure is facing a van failure. How does an infrastructure tell an application to slow down how does it happen? How do we make that communication happen? That's what we're trying to focus on. So just another point uh, in, the, in the previous slide is as you look at the world moving forward, you will have APIs across the board in the infrastructure space, in the application space, in the middleware space. Even services will be exposed as an API. So you'll have all these integration platforms, all the services exposed. How do we connect this world? How do we navigate this world? It's going to be pretty complex. So that's the world we want to navigate, and we want to have a solution for it. So way to do it, we have a four-layer architecture. So I want to play the slide. This is the infrastructure piece people are very familiar with. This is the bottom of the layer. This is the wiring. This is the plumbing. People are familiar with that. If you look at all the vendors, they're saying that they're going to expose APIs from their infrastructure to be consumed. Then came SDN. It said, hey, the controllers will come. They will abstract the network. They will make it programmable. OK, good. I don't need to know what version of software I'm running on a router, which router, which vendor. You don't need to know any of that. So you, you're pretty much good with that. But the controllers themselves expose not-born APIs to be consumed. So you can actually 
call an API for doing QoS or doing ACL, you can actually consume it as an API. But there are also these applications on the top. They don't know how to talk to this one. The way we're going to solve this is we're bringing a platform, which we call the Cisco integration platform, which actually makes this connection possible. Once this application platform is uh, integration platform is installed, what we have done is we have, ins we have created Cisco's IP by developing APIs on top of the Cisco integration platform, exposing it not bound so that your applications can consume it. The way we do it is the first level of abstraction from the controller is you don't need to know the network, so they abstract the network for you. What we are doing is we're abstracting the controller themselves. So what we are saying is over the next five to seven years, you will have controllers from Cisco, non-Cisco, you will have infrastructure from multiple vendors, you will have open flow, non-open flow, all the mix and match you can think of. This is the world you will have for the next five to seven years. So this integration platform will abstract all the complexity for you. Uh, and I can give you an example. Let's say if you want to run a controller for bringing out the topology of a network, and you have a controller for WAN, so you need to query the controller for WAN to get the topology. Then if you have a controller for the data center, you need to query the controller for getting the topology. What we are doing in our platform is that I'm going to expose an API called topology. And you can pass parameters saying that you want topology for data center, you want topology for WAN, or you want topology for all. I will go and talk to multiple controllers southbound from the con my platform and bring the output to you. So by this, we are solving actually all the three integration challenges that we have a complete integration platform. And the reason we'll continue to invest and build connectors, and that's the way we're going to build the ecosystem. This is not a one trick pony, if you will. It's going to continue to evolve. We will have multiple controllers that will integrate southbound, and those controllers will integrate with multiple infrastructure southbound. So we are not uh, bound by any product or anything. We'll integrate with anything southbound to the network world. In the application world, right out of the bat, we have 120 connectors to different enterprise applications, to Salesforce, Oracle, Siebel, Remedy, and most of the applications we have connections to. When you build all these connectors, when, we buy the, when the customer buys this platform, two things are guaranteed. One is the entire stack is pre-tested and pre-integrated. It's drop ship, it completely drop ship. So you can actually go from six weeks to eight weeks, you can go into production. Otherwise, it's, we're looking at a 12 to 18 months integration project. So we are going to reduce it drastically by that much. I want to leave you with some real examples. Before, what we want to do is that when you talk to people about SDN applications, they say, everybody says, I will build an application. The, the, what we're saying is that, yeah, you build an application. But if you are building an application as a user interface on top of the controller, in our opinion, it's a light version. You just Anybody who has a better UI can do a much better than job than you, what you've done. So it, it's a game that you can't keep up with. And it's just a UI play. What you're interested in is in the advanced and the professional versions. This is where we are investing our time and energy. So the advanced version talks to about only one controller at a time. We are already working on a professional version, so we have multiple controllers that we are already integrated with. I'm going to show you the examples that we have, uh, real examples that we have built. And we can add analytics down the line. We are planning to add analytics. So these are the two applications that I want to talk about. One is bandwidth on demand with calendaring. This is for the service provider van, where you want to have bandwidth on demand right now. Or you can schedule it for next couple of weeks, for a couple of hours. The second one is intelligent traffic steering. Let's say you have two data centers or two colo locations. You want to push traffic from one colo to another colo or you want to do data center to data center for backup, you can actually schedule a tunnel, virtual tunnel, between these two data centers, and set up both L2, L, um, all the way from L2 to L4 match criteria for the traffic to flow in the tunnel, and schedule it. So let's say you want to do backup every Saturday for the next 10 weeks, you can actually schedule it. These are real applications uh, we're talking about here. So let's take the first one. 
The first one is the bandwidth on demand. This, this we are working with two service providers already, one for L3 VPN, another one for L2 VPN. The challenge with uh, VPN in terms of business is that it's flat or not growing. In terms of operational challenge, most of the service providers truly don't have a visibility into the capacity in the core. Every time a marketing guy walks up to them and says, network operation team, I want to create this new service, fancy new service, they'll say, okay, I'll do it for you, but here is a bill for it, because I need to go and buy more equipment and create more bandwidth. So what this application does is that before going that route, this application will, first of all, extract more bandwidth out of the existing investment. So it will tell you how much bandwidth you already have, how much capacity you already have. Once you have that capacity, and this is where the integration with the enterprise application comes in handy, you should be able to sell that bandwidth right in real time. Let's say you have 10 gig of bandwidth available now. You should have it open up for customers to buy that bandwidth. So that's what we have done in this application. We actually go, I would highly recommend you to look at the demo just behind this uh, classroom. We have the app running there. You can actually go and say, I want a bandwidth between two locations, one gig of bandwidth, this much of latency on this date for this many hours. The query actually gets routed to the controller. The controller in this case is the Way, which is a Cisco controller. There are two controllers here. One controller, Way focuses on all the things about WAN optimization. It will tell you the best path between two locations. It will find the shortest path. What we do from the application is that when you say, I want this bandwidth, and I also want to steer traffic into the tunnel. I don't want everybody to go in, going in the backup uh, traffic. I want only backup traffic to go in the tunnel. What we do is that we create a tunnel, then we take that request back and push it to another controller, which is in this case is tail of, which can actually steer traffic for you. It can do pure traffic engineering. So all these functions are exposed as one service to you. So everything that happens southbound of SIP, multiple controller interactions and the controller to the infrastructure interactions, all is, is abstracted. As a developer or as a consumer, you don't need to worry about it. It's all pre-integrated. The next app I want to talk about is this intelligent traffic steering with scheduling. So here the use case is that between two data centers, usually uh, if you want to pump traffic, and let's say you are connected to a particular port on a particular switch. We are actually working on a POC with a customer. Uh, the use case is there are two colo locations. And in the two colo locations, the customer has rented equipment and ports. Now, on demand, the customer wants to create a tunnel between two ports on demand. And he wants to define the ports based on the SLA. This is where the application integration becomes interesting. What the customer wants is that, and by the way, this demo is there in the world of solutions, which will open at 5 o'clock in the evening. If the customer is a gold customer, he wants a primary route and a backup route automatically configured by the application. So if the primary route fails, the traffic will automatically switch to the backup route without doing anything. If I'm telling you I'm a bronze customer, you won't get any backup. You only get a primary link. That's it. This decision the application is making and then sending the inf information to the controller to make those static route or defined paths from one port to another port. While you're doing this, you also can say, match the criteria on layer two, or layer three, or layer four. I say, you can say, only for this particular IP address source and this destination IP address, all of the traffic to move in this tunnel. You can define all this criteria. On top of that, you can schedule it. You can say, every Thursday, I want this to be done for one hour. In both the use cases, the challenge is not about creating the tunnel. What we do is we can also delete the tunnel once the work is done and push it back to your inventory. So the bandwidth goes back to your inventory. We can give statistics around latency, bandwidth, and all that. So even when you submit a request, you can say, for my gold customer, when you're creating a tunnel between two co-locations, I want the bandwidth to be this much. I want the latency to be maintained at this level. So we keep monitoring the whole path for traffic and all these parameters. So this is just a marketing slide saying, what are we trying to solve, and what is it for? So this is saying that the same L2, L3 VPN, we can do both. In one application, we can solve both OPEX challenges and 
uh, your revenue challenges. We can grow your business because we can find more bandwidth. We can sell those bandwidth in real time. As we go forward, we are also working on another app which will integrate with OpenStack. So one of the questions that customers keep asking is that, I know I can place a virtual machine, a virtual load in a data center based on the data center characteristics, but is there an app that can combine both? Can I get a VM placement decision based on both the data center characteristics and the WAN characteristics? I'll give an example. So it's not on this slide, but it's an application that we are working on. So that challenge is that if you say I want a VM with the characteristics of this much RAM, CPU, this much uh, storage, but I want upstream bandwidth to be this much, downstream bandwidth to be one gig, latency to be this much, I can actually find a data center which will match both the criteria. So that's another application we're working on. This is about the traffic. So this is the actual screenshot of the application that you're demoing in the backside. This is how the screen looks. This is how a user would interact on a self-service portal with the bandwidth on demand application. As you can see, I don't know if you're, you can actually specify the locations. The important thing in this one is the customer, when he's logging in, he gets to see the locations that he has the MPLS VPN connections from. Let's say service provider has got hundreds of locations. If you as a customer is logging in, you'll only see your locations. The way we are doing it is in the back end, we're firing two queries. One goes to a CRM to pull all the details about the customer, who you are, your goal customer, where, what kind of billing discounts you get, and all that. Another query you're firing in the back end to your OSS BSS system, and I pull all the inventory information. That's how I know you have three locations, and I plot it on the map. And I give you this UI to play around and check if you can get the bandwidth on a particular day and time with all the latency and all the characteristics. Once you hit that get code button, you can actually get the system to quote a dollar value for you for your request. Because in the back end, it is going to the quoting system and getting the information. It knows who you are, which customer you are, goal, which discount. And once you like the code, you can actually convert that code into an order. It actually talks to our ordering system and creates a purchase order. Once the purchase order is generated and the bandwidth is used, it'll push that information into the billing system, so we get the billing system completely updated. All this is in one flow. This, this happens all in one flow. And this is how the order number and the flow looks like. You can see we're given space. This is just a UI that we have built, but you can integrate with any system that you have in your enterprise. And this is how the traffic steering app looks like. Uh, this app, you have um, different switches with different ports. You can actually select point and select the switch on the port and create the tunnel between those and create the path, defined path. As you can see here, you're looking at a status view page. This demo is going to be in the world of solutions downstairs. I want to leave, uh, and this is how the APIs work because this is a DevNet. We are, we are using the APIs based on RAML specifications. This is how the APIs are built on the platform. These are the APIs that you as a consumer would call it. I'm just sharing a little bit of, it will be on the web for you to look at. So basically, uh, if you actually look at this list of, what we're doing is when you log into the system in the back end, we are firing an API to the controller to get all the nodes. And then we cross check that with the nodes that we have from the OSS BSS system what nodes you are allowed to play with. So two demo booths, one right behind you for the bandwidth on demand application demo. I encourage you to go look at it. One demo on the traffic steering and the world of solutions booth. I want to leave it up for open for any questions. Any questions? Okay. Good. Thanks for your time. Thank you.